Welcome back to the channel ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to make a little video about our day-to-day -day operations here at 23rd Garage. As you guys know, we don't post a video on everything that we do. So today we decided we are going to film some of the in-between stuff that we actually have to do here at 23rd Garage. Now behind me is a 1996, what is the Impala? Is that a Chevy Nate? I think so. Yeah, a Chevy Impala SS. Mind you, it's an SS. Look at this. I can prove it. I can prove it. Look at that. Chevy SS. Now, the interesting thing about this car is it actually belongs to the same guy that owns the Chevy Z71 that we fixed, which also happens to be here. We are doing more work on that. Nate, throw up a little clip of the truck that we did for my boy Ellis here. Hey, look at this. This is insane how much I didn't even realize how bad it was. We might have to tack on a couple hundred more dollars. I feel bad for anyone that owns a Chevy Avalanche, 1995 rare one of three in the world. It's a two wheel drive. Hey buddy, why don't you look at the maxles, bud? Look at the maxles. Honestly, for this truck to be in this condition, in this situation as it is now, it's a miracle. Paula has a couple of issues. I'm gonna crank it up right now just to show you guys what is going on with this car. Uh, it's not a big deal, it has nothing to do with framework, but it is something that we can take care of. So give me one second. What's wrong with it? Not really. What's wrong with it? What you guys were hearing is in an exhaust tick. I don't know if you heard it. I may have been a little bit too hard on it, but there's an exhaust leak. So we are going to lift it up and check where the leak is. I'm pretty sure that it's right there next to the engine because of the ticking noise. If you hear a car going it's usually right there by the header. So I'm gonna lift it up. We're gonna see what's going on with it. And hopefully we can get this thing fixed and out of here today because it is Saturday and we have a lot of stuff to do that has nothing to do with work. So we're gonna lift it up real quick and see what's going on. Right there, look. Nope, on that side, right there. On what side? What? So we have a broken bolt on our catalytic converter here. And as you can see, this is an aftermarket catalytic converter because what I think happened was somebody stole the man's cats and uh, probably sold them for about 20 bucks and got a crack rock. But uh, he had to put some aftermarket ones on here because aftermarket ones tend to be a little bit cheaper than factory. And what I think happened was when they were messing with these catalytic converters and welding them on this, that, and the other, they probably went up there and tried to take these bolts loose. And this is a 1996, so, you know, the chances of taking a exhaust bolt off of a 1996 is like 50-50. It's either gonna break, strip out, or it's gonna come off and make you happy. In this case, it broke. So what we need to do is remove this catalytic converter all the way down to here and hope that these bolts come out. And then once we remove the converter itself, we can then focus on the bolt, which uh, it can go one of two ways. Either we can weld the nut onto it and uh, back the bolt out and save the threads, or we will just have to simply drill through the hole and then put a bolt in the nut. So what we are going to do now is we are going to remove this cat 
and see if we can remove that bolt. If we can remove the bolt, we're in good shape. If we can't, we gotta start heating in a beat. The cool thing about this car is that every single bolt is a different size. <laughs> Okay, one down, that's good news. Place it up there, don't lose it, don't lose it. Ah, it's got a nut. Look at that. That's professionalism. All right, we got those off. Now we got one more, it looks like it could be a 13. We're gonna lay all these up here, that way you don't lose it. Look at that. Everything came off beautifully. Another cool thing about this job is the owner said, do what you gotta do. So that means if I have to replace the entire car, that's what we're gonna do. Well, price just went up, what can I say? Don't you just love it when you get a raise midway through the job? Look, best way to get a, a bolt out of a socket is watch this. Well, like that, you see that? That's the best way to do it. Now you won't wear eye protection when you do it. See the other one. Slippy, slippy, slippy. 14. That's one cool thing about it, man. news man <laughs> they already got a bolt and a nut on this one which means that I'm somehow gonna have to I'm gonna have to somehow get that out of there and stick this up above hopefully I can get in there Oh, 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 nope. Okay, we're on it, but we're not. I can't get it on there, Nate. Can't get it on there? I can't get it on there. Oh, I need to try the other side of the tool. I'm hoping they use the 14 for that side too. kind of size they stick up in there man the way a nut and a bolt works is the bolt is sticking through the hole the nuts on their side so if you jam the thing that the bolts holding to the side it will hold the bolt so I've got this pry bar here now you want to make sure that it's got about a 35 degree angle on it just like that and then you get your impact here and you put your 35 degree angle Pry bar on it, and you put some put some pressure on it. <laughs> it don't come out no easier than that. I mean, come on, guys. you guys seen that? I'm just wondering why his oxygen sensors ain't hooked up. All right, now we've got our head gasket. There's our point of failure right there. See, that's where all the little. Uh, sound is coming from right there with them burn holes. Well, yeah, when the piston goes through there. Yep. Yep. Yep That's plenty of space for a piston to go through and uh, What do we got going on here? We got one broke bolt. We got one not broke bolt and then we got this bolt Golly, bum, man. So all the bolts are broken. Just two of them 
But you can just knock those out with the air hammer. They're studs. Yeah, but they're not screwed in. <coughs> yeah, they are. Nah. Those are studs, bud. Look, I just took them out. Hey, success! Cover me, I'm reloading. Oh, shoot, Nate. We what? forgot to get gas this week. Lincoln, how you gonna weld it? <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember, but last week when we were doing Ben's Mustang, we had to go down to Jake's and get, we had to borrow his gas. And uh, I don't know how that happened that this entire week we did not need welding. That's kind of interesting. Uh, so I think, I think we need to go down to Jake's place and get some fuel. Hey Jake. What up? You got any uh, welding gas over there at the, <laughs> at the <You're> shop? <laughs> uh, we're gonna run down to Jake's and uh, probably borrow his gas tank because we don't know that we work at a shop and we didn't refill our tank this entire week. So uh, we're gonna run down there, grab the gas, and then we'll be right back. All right, since uh, I, I did drive the E92 M3 to work today and uh, the Cummins is at the shop, the only one way that we can get this gas is possibly, probably the Grand Marquise. What do you think, mate? I think so. I think if I crank that thing up and air up the tire, I think it's gonna be perfect for this operation. Let's crank it up. Do a burnout though. Huh? Why wouldn't it do a burnout? Hey, it's for sale. Six thousand. Firm. Twenty six. Yeah, you got to spend Twenty six, bro. Sixty nine thousand. Sixty nine thousand firm. I know what I got. Look at that. Pro huge, big oxyacetylene accelerated. Oxy valve. Oxy accelerated. Man, I'm getting deja vu from this. Like we just did it. I think we just, we just did it. Got the nut threaded onto the old stud there, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to weld this up, essentially turning the stud into a bolt, and hopefully the heat from the welding, and then, you know, the torque from me unscrewing the nut is gonna get this thing loose. All right, right after while well, it's hot? Yeah, because you know, we're trying to use the heat from the welding. You sure it's not going to just break the weld? It might. Hey. It broke. Oh. What happened? <laughs> My weld didn't penetrate. We got to let that thing cool down, bro. It wanna go, but is it gonna break? Ah oh, man, dude, it just broke. Dang, I think we gotta drill it, Nate. You gotta drill it out. I think we gotta drill it. Well, grind it flat with the little grinder and drill yeah, it out. Yeah, that's what we gotta do. Hey. This just turned into, this just went from a $500 job to a $1,000 job. I was like, 
We got through it. Dang, I got metal shavings on me, bro. I'm gonna charge for every bit of shaving that hit me. That's like 4,000 right there. We got this. Need the gasket for whatever this is. I don't know. What was this? Oh, the manifold, the exhaust manifold gasket on the right side. So we're gonna run down to O'Reilly's real quick. We're gonna grab a new one. And then once we get the new gasket, we will get everything installed. Right, what, you, the, what, you, what you got there, boss? All right, I got some grade A bolts and I got a new gasket. And now we are going to try to install it. Uh, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, on this side right here, Nate, I'm gonna drop the bolt in from the back side. That way, you know, is that, you don't have to stick the nut you're on You're not there. gonna put all of them in like that? No, I, these, I, I, I don't know, look. I figured you just put them on. Easier, look. You see that? That's just gonna be super easy. Well, yeah, I figured you just put them on in like that. I could that. probably do them all like that if I wanted to. But now actually it's gonna be easier to yeah. That one's gonna be a lot easier. Yeah. Cause all you gotta do is just really hold it. You ain't really gotta swivel a nut on there. You want an extra hand, my man. Yeah, can you grab it at the back? Yeah, hold that right there. Watch out with that gas tank. All right, you wanna get it over this little bit, all right? Yeah. We got it all bolted on, got these bolts on, had to add a nut right here. We got three grade eight bolts up at the top. And we even went ahead and plugged in the catalytic converter, which was not plugged in before. So now we are going to move on to the rest of the issues that we have on the Impala SS here. We actually have a big gaping hole. I'm sure a lot of you guys will know what a big gaping hole is. Look at that. Uh, basically what I need to do is I need to weld that back into position and see uh, one thing that I do not like about custom muffler shops is Guys, let's use a little bit of common sense here. You can't just weld a solid a really strong piece of metal to a piece of pipe You have to wrap it around look like this piece right here should have been wrapped around so that it's mechanically holding the pipe and then you tack that to the pipe and it will never come off. I promise you it will never come off. If you just weld a solid rod to the end of a pipe, to the outside of a pipe, 
I don't care how good your welds are, that's exactly what's gonna happen right there. As you guys can see, this was simply just welded right there instead of wrapping around the pipe. This is a big problem and this is exactly what everyone who gets a custom exhaust has to deal with you know, a couple, maybe two, three years down the road of driving their car. Same thing here, look at this. This is just crazy though, like, I don't even see how this one broke. I think it was probably something to do with somebody striking this muffler because as you can see, this muffler's all bent out of shape. So we're gonna, we're gonna try to straighten that out. I don't know, I can't promise that I'll straighten those out. Uh, but I do like these Chevy tips. Nate, what if we put these on the Beamer? Yeah, they do look good. I Let's think cut them off. Good. Let's take him. I say we cut him off. He ain't even gonna know he had him. Those are kind of too small. We need like 16 yeah, inch Yeah, yeah, dude, our motor is way too big for these things. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna start by cleaning that part up a little bit. We'll weld that back on. I'm not gonna do any kind of upgrading to that. I'm just gonna weld it back on how it is because uh, we're just trying to hang it. Uh, I'm gonna tell him, if you want, we can upgrade your hangers. But who the heck is going to want to upgrade their hangers? Who cares? Alright, so I said I wasn't going to do it, but I went ahead and did it. As you guys can see, I put a nice uh, it's a it's a hanger from a muffler. I don't know. Let me see. Where, right here. Look, there's proof. Uh, factory certified Ford approved or Chevy approved hanger. And I welded it onto the bottom because now instead of the muffler hanging on the little piece of sheet metal that they welded to, it's now just hanging on this half moon right here. And this half moon is welded solid to this hanger, and it's welded solid to the muffler. So you know it ain't going nowhere. And now we gotta move on to this hanger, which is a little bit more complex. Just like that. No, Nate, give me my give me my welding tip. Welding. Nope. Give me my tip, Nate. But I ain't got a flame tune like that. There we go. Look at that. Solid. Solid. Now we got a little bit of wrap around the pipe and it ain't going nowhere. I mean, I can, I can understand why they don't want to do it though. Yeah, they don't want to do it. Yeah, they don't Them codes are related for the valve box. like a dream man she's done she's all done i kind of like the impala man that chevy impala ss sounds kind of nice what do you think nate should we get one i don't know you already got a, a one piece of junk <laughs> i'm just messing with you bro i don't want this thing man i i wouldn't know what to do with it it's just way too much power for me you know i need to stick to a hellcat yeah, yeah, this thing got way more power than a Hellcat. No, nah, I'm just kidding. But anyways, yeah, that's this is one of the things that we deal with on a daily basis. This is the type of jobs that we get in from time to time. And we just do them. We don't really film a lot of it because uh, it's hard. Once, like, you could take a smaller job like this, and if we start filming it, it'll turn into an all-day thing. And then it ties up Nate's time, and it ties up my time because I have to stop there and wait, you know, 
I'll be sitting there waiting. Nate will have to say action. I can't do nothing, you know. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And I uh, hope you guys know kind of the day-to-day -day operations that go on here, man. We got a lot of stuff like this that goes on. We yeah, we're going to show them what we did last Saturday. So, like, put that yeah, in Yeah, like, last Saturday we did a lot of stuff. Uh, I had my headlights redone by Andrew over at Headlight Restoration. A huge shout-out to Andrew. As a matter of fact, you know what? I think this video is sponsored by Headlight Restorations of Chattanooga. So, uh, why don't we show them a little bit of what Andrew can do? Yeah, let's go ahead and show them Yeah, that. roll the clip, Nate. What happens? Let's see if, if Andrew can make these headlights come back. Andrew is the owner of Headlight Restorations here in Chattanooga. So if anybody needs their headlights done like what we did with the E92 here, which by the way, Andrew said we did a great job on. Yeah. But now that we have a new contact for headlight restoration, we may not even have to mess with it ourselves. So Andrew offered to help me out on the truck uh, just to kind of show what he can do. And so Check we'll see out. what happens. Look at this. Look at that. It's like glitter. It's glittery, man. Fairy dust over here. We gotta get that off the truck, man. We can't have no fairy dust on the truck now. It's gonna be kind of sus. Uh, so explain a little bit what you're gonna do to it. Yeah, so basically, I, I mean, I tape off the whole headlight, put an oxidation remover on it, pull the oxidation, so the yellowing crab in there, take that out first, and then basically with something, even like this bad, I'll do 1,000 grit sandpaper, 2,000 grit sandpaper, and then 3,000 grit trizac then polish it, so get it clear before I clear coat it. Okay. And then um, I'll do a three uh, Meguiar's headlight coating on top of that. I used to use 2K, so like Spray Max 2K. Mm -hmm. What I found is that it's harder, it's meant for paint, so Spray Max will look great for like three years, and then it's out in the sun and it actually heats up and can't flex, so it cracks your housing. It'll delaminate. No, it literally cracks your housing and you have to like replace really? it. Really? Yeah. Wow. So. I wish I could call all those people back that I did that for. If you're one of those people, call me back. I'll fix it. But uh, <laughs> replace good man. Because <laughs> like, I can't. You can't fix it if it's already cracked. You got to replace it. Hey, right? I don't know. Statute of limitations is over. Yeah, <laughs> it's been too long. Right. <laughs> but I was like, oh, you don't know what you don't know. So yeah. Well, that's good that you perfected it. Uh, is it true that uh, hitting them with like a 400 grit will damage them? So great question. I had a guy, his wife had someone hit her headlights with had some deep gouges in it. And I started with 250 grit, just to smooth those feather edge them out, and then work your way up 600 grit, 800 grit, 1000 grit, and then it's fine. There's only so much thickness to the lens, so I mean, at some point you're gonna- Go right through it. Yeah, go through it. And then you get to get new ones. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. All right, well, let's yeah. see what happens. Yeah, I'll get it knocked out, so. On average, it takes about an hour. 45 minutes to an hour, so. Man, let's see what you got. Cool, cool. I'm gonna get my stuff and get ready. Guys, I cannot believe that I am looking at the same headlights. I really, I, I really can't. I honestly did not think that anything could be done with these. I was telling Andrew earlier, I said I was just gonna drop kick him over Lookout Mountain. But uh, he brought him back, man, and they looked freaking amazing. Like, obviously, it's not gonna be perfect because they were just gone. Like, you can still see, like, very faint 
lines from, I guess, where the plastic from the back. Yeah, so if you see, it looks like glitter sparkles. It's inside the polycarbonate lens, it just cracks in there. Yeah, which, I mean, I, I'm, like I said, I was just gonna toss them, man. I didn't even think that they could look like this. I really didn't. This is and why, you gotta stay on top of it. Don't let them get this bad. I gotta start hiding them. I gotta start putting little, little blankets on them. No, this happened when I, I lived out there in Ringgold and uh, the way my house was set up on the mountain, I would get like sun for, until the sun, from where the until sun, like the whole day. yeah, when it Jeez. came up to where it set, it was direct sunlight. So tailgate and headlights. So like it start with the back and then by the time, the end of the day, it would work the whole entire truck and it was parked in the driveway all the time because it didn't yeah. fit in the garage. So that, I mean, that's the thing, like it just heat up so much that it just cracks in there. Yeah. Yeah, so. and I was just gonna, I was just gonna replace them, but I think I can still get a couple of years of use out of them, even though I do have to modify them. They're not from this truck. And if I showed you guys how I've got them hooked up, you'd all laugh at me. <laughs> I laughed. <laughs> you seen I, it? I laughed. Hey, well, you weren't allowed to look in they, there. They, they work, you know? <laughs> they work, exactly, they work. They do point straight up though. They point, like, if you're driving down the interstate, like, you can literally see me. Out of all the cars, you can see me because all the, sh the the interstate signs, they're all lit like up. Backlit. Yeah, and people think that I'm always bright lighting them, but I'm not. It's just the low beams are pointing up because they're electronically adjusted. It's from, I guess, a higher model truck or something. And so I guess I need to like cross the wires and make them point down, but I don't have time for that. So I'm sorry if I've blinded you on the road. It's just something you have to deal with. I can't do anything about it. I, I guess I could, but I'm just not going to. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm super happy about this. And uh, if anybody out there needs to get their headlights restored, uh, but you also do car detailing as well, right? Yeah, we don't tell anyone about that, but I do, yeah. Okay, yeah, so I didn't, I didn't say that, but he can if it needs to happen. But headlight restoration, guys, he made these absolutely clapped out headlights look really good. I'm super happy with it. And uh, what about, what kind of recommendation do you have to like take care of them? Is there something I can put on them? Yeah, so it's just like if you were putting wax on your car whenever you wash your truck, throw a wax on your headlights. I say wax, no one uses paste wax, right? Um, I actually put a, after these secured, I put a one year ceramic coating on top of them just to help add to it. So you can continually do that if you wanted. Um, spray sealant, even like turtle wax, spray wax, just every six months, just something on there. So. I always tell people you wouldn't roll out to the beach for five hours without sunscreen. Every few months, throw some sunscreen on your car. Your, that uh, makes sense. Headlights, so that makes a lot of sense. But there, nothing's permanent, by the way. Nothing permanent. So yeah. If someone ever tells you they're permanent, run from them. This will this will last you a year to five years. They'll be clear. So. See, that's what I like. I like the honesty, and that goes a long way in the automotive industry because you'll have people that come out and they're like, "Dude, I'll hook it up, man. They'll never go fading again." And that's just not true because, I mean, heck, even factory headlights will fade out if you keep them out there in the sun. The UV light does a lot of damage to them. So uh, it was it was really cool that, that I actually met Andrew. He's actually a subscriber of ours and he reached out to me. And, and uh, so here we are and I'm super happy that I actually met him because from now on, if we need any kind of headlight restoration, we're gonna give him a call. He's gonna come out here, okay. knock him out for us. Yeah. And, uh, We'll definitely be referring anybody to you as well. I mean, it's crazy. Like now you can drive at night. Yeah. It might not be as bad pointing up now that they're actually clear. Hey, I, hey, I, now I'm going to be really blinding people out there. <laughs> now you're going to yeah, stop. Dude, I got pulled over tonight. <laughs> well, hey, the plan for this truck, I'm actually going to rebuild this truck because I use this truck for construction and I really ragged it out. And obviously you guys can see the big bumper on here. I'm just, I'm done with this look. I want the fifth generation look, which uh, in my opinion looks a lot better. And since the 2500s have the same body as the, uh, what is it? The, the, the 2500 fifth gens have the same body as the older fourth gens. So I can actually put that front end on this truck without having to modify the doors and the cabs and stuff. My cousin's actually doing that right now, and he's pioneering the way for me, and once he's done, uh, he's gonna tell me everything that I need to do it. Uh, Goon Squad has also done it as well on their dad's truck, 
it turned out really good. And I just, I think it would be really cool not only to show you guys the process of how you can turn your fourth gen into a fifth gen, but also just for myself, uh, you know, it'd be really cool. But don't look at the roof, please. <laughs> That's all V-Tune right there. I'm calling V-Tune out. V-Tune body order. No, I'm just kidding, they cut that from the video. But that's it, man. I, I'm really happy, man. I, I don't even know what to say. I didn't think that they could look like this. Cool. They look almost as good as, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, damn. That's crazy, like, it. that's why, I, it's just about, the analogy I use is like, if you've ever worn glasses, or sunglasses and you've got like a smudge on them you're walking around all day you're like why can't i see anything and then you walk past a piece of glass you're like oh man there's crap in my lens yeah you wipe it off and then you can see that's what you're having to go through with this because it can't the light can't get out because it's having to hit that crap in there that makes sense so, once you take that smudge off your lens if you will then you can actually get out that makes a lot of sense i will say this one took longer than i thought there was some kind of clear coat on this it was like it was that glitter the pixie dust yeah, that was the, the Chineseium. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. The China dust. But once I got all that down... You want to do a little plug for your company or whatever? Yeah, Just like go. Chattanooga Headlight Restoration. Yes, yeah, we're mobile. We come to you within an hour of Chattanooga. We come to you, knock them out. Lifetime guarantee. I think I'm the only one in the area that does that. So, if they yellow and fade again, I'll come back out to you. No charge and knock them out. But yeah. <laughs> Look us up on Facebook. Um, and happy to help you. Guys, that's pretty big. Lifetime guarantee on something like this, that's that's actually huge. Uh, because like Andrew said earlier, nothing's permanent, but the fact that he's willing to come out there and refresh him again, I think that's, that's worth getting your headlights done just in itself. Because you have somebody who is going to take care of your headlight for you whenever it fades out.